Okay. So, um, uh, Leo, you're probably the one most in the center of the um, the realm and boundary issue. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I can give some updates. Uh, since the last meeting, uh, as we communicated uh, in the uh, realms issue, it seems like we got a uh, what we can consider to be a positive note uh, from from Dominic uh, to to pursue what we want, uh, but also. Uh, I was talking with Gariri uh, before that if we could actually use symbols as we map keys, um, like because if, if we could at least share this identity through symbols, I thought it was going to be simple. Gariri had some questions on uh, preserving uh, reference and like using symbol four for mixed up uh, references, et cetera, et cetera. But it seems uh, those questions are cleared out already by Daniel's work. Um, and Daniel already like kicked off most of these, uh, th this work solving some questions that we've had. And uh, at some point, Caridi had some syncs as well with Daniel. And it seems like symbols as weak map keys are the way to go and probably a easiest path compared to the object create identity, uh, shareable, shareable identity. Is, is um, there, uh, Leo, is there a, so, so first of all, the, the object is shareable identity that Kriti was proposing was a frozen empty object with no prototype. And in the semantics of JavaScript, uh, a frozen empty object with no prototype uh, has no realm specific semantics. It's completely uh, immutable, uh, context-free identity. So uh, I, I certainly uh, have an aesthetic preference for um, uh, for unregistered symbols over um, over that in order to really have something that's value-like and context-free. Uh, but is there anything stronger than a mild aesthetic difference? Uh, is there anything fundamental about using a symbol rather than an object? Um, I, from my understanding, uh, it's a, like a more simple implementation process and actually uh, saying what means to be generating the, uh, these values. Uh, but I, this is, uh, this parts from assumption. I, I believe Daniel will uh, have better context to, to talk about this. I also think uh, when we talk about these uh, objects and the, the creation process of these objects, I think this this is something to be reviewed when we actually have records and tuples available. Uh, but I also so, like assumptions and I believe Daniel might have more context. So uh, I, I hear Mark's aesthetic preference. I Right now I see this mostly as a, it's not so hard to implement either way. I think if we say an object, if we want to make a new way to vend an object, which has no prototype or, or no prototype and it's frozen, and it has no properties, then we could mark it with an internal slot that would be kind of the brand for like, well, this is a special object marker. But I like the, I like how it feels to, to build off of the object primitive split here. I also wanted to note that for records and tuples, if we go with this current design of having uh, boxed objects inside of records and tuples, and I know we've talked about whether the boxes should be implicit, but I think they should be explicit, then we would have a predicate on records and tuples, which would say whether it contains a box. So we would only allow things that don't contain a box to go through these membrane, uh, to go through these to, to realms. So um, there's sort of a consistent point of order. Sorry. Yeah. We, I need the link to share with Karidi. He's trying to get in into oh. the middle. Uh, so the link to the Zoom. Oh, I got a. I find I found the, the link. Sorry. I just want to for Karidi to be able to 
sure. during this conversation. I'm sorry, Daniel. So oh. I, I suspect that symbols will be enough for this proposal to be usable, given it, its use as a weak map key on both sides of the, of the realm boundary. Um, I think it would be unfortunate. I mean, as much as I want to see records and temples advance quickly, uh, I think it would be a little unfortunate to make realms wait for them. And I was hoping that symbols would be enough. Do you see any reason why realm, why, why uh, records and temples is needed to advance um, this notion of realms if we have symbols as weak map keys? I don't think it's needed. I just think uh, it's a, it, it might complement uh, in yeah. the long path. So, kind of go, go ahead. question in the same vein. Uh, if we have a way of vending identity that does produce symbols, uh, to my knowledge, there wouldn't be anything to have a corollary where we could vend an identity that is an object later on. In particular, uh, one thing that I've seen in the past that I've never had a practical use for it, is wrapping a proxy around these vended identities. Um, I don't know if that matters to anybody here, but you can't wrap around a symbol. Uh, can you say more about what you would want it to mean to wrap a proxy around a vended identity? Because each proxy has its own identity. Like, I'm curious what you're what Correct. effect you're trying so, to make. So essentially you have a box. I don't have a good word for this. This is getting weird. Uh, you have a proxy around a unique identity that's used to map to values. And so when you perform actions on the proxy, you can use the real identity for it. Uh, with a symbol, you can't wrap them in any way. I've never had a practical use case for this but it's just something to note, yeah. Well, I think I've, if I understand correctly, and we have talked about that in the past, like, you really want to uh, disable access to a particular symbol. For example, you can construct a symbol on the other side of the membrane and um, somehow have these two symbols to represent the same thing, but in two different Realm, so you don't even share the symbol, but normally you would just share the symbol and that, that should be fine. Uh, cross realm, they work pretty well. Um, so if, if, if that is what you're talking about, uh, I think there is still the possibility that you can wrap the symbol. So you're not really wrapping it, just creating a new one that somehow you know that represents something on the other side. So you hide the, the actual symbol. Yeah, that seems fine. I'm, I'm just recalling back the richer keys proposal that had a way of vending both symbols and objects because people wanted both. Carity, what you're talking about sounds like a particular kind of distortion that we've not yet defined. So Alex, you asked a question in the chat. Could you could you explain that a little more? It turns out to be exactly what we were talking about just a moment ago. Um, I thought it was a different question, but it's actually the same one. So, so I, I want to mention, like, I guess um, I was the champion for the for the symbol as weak map key proposal, but I would be happy to turn it over to to people here. I'm not actively working on it because the whole box thing, we're proposing to solve it in some other way for records and doubles. So it was held back to stage one, just entirely for this missing motivation concern. So I think it would be natural to have the realm proposal champions be, you know, making the case for that motivation instead. Was there any other reason for holding back symbols as weak map keys other than lack of motivation? Uh, we had the, um, you know, there were like the arguments between you and Jordan about right. how things in symbol.4 should be treated. And I guess that in, in my proposal, symbol.4 symbols would be permitted as weak map keys, even though they're held alive. Just like, right. you know, array.prototype can also be a weak map key, even though it's not going to die either. 
Yeah, just to, to 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 just completely flesh that out. I agree with the I agree with where that landed, but to completely flesh that out, uh, array dot uh, array dot prototype is not an adequate example because uh, it can get garbage collected when its realm is garbage collected, um, whereas a symbol dot four is forever. Uh, the uh, example that was fully convincing is if you take the weak map and you store it in itself as a key, then uh, the key necessarily has the white lifetime as long as the weak map itself. Uh, you're right. That's a better example. Uh, one thing to add to that, and I'm, I've been thinking about this for a while, like, uh, is that if we are pushed back on this, um, we can always try to find a, a little bit more complex solution for the problem where if you do symbol of four and um, eventually that uh, that value actually gets uh, collected because you don't hold a reference to it anymore and you do symbol of four in some other time you don't have a way from the program to observe that is the same symbol that was returned before and therefore we might be able to do a little bit more advanced I, just in case that they push back on that in case I, that they push back I think this is quite misguided as a as a path to to look down. I don't think we should be, you know, pushing for the expectation that such a collection would take place. I think okay. it's more that not everything that you put as a weak map key might be collected. I think that's the argument that should be made instead. Yeah, I, I, for, uh, a I agree with Daniel. Uh, B Kariti, uh, there's there there the impossible case is that you've stored an association in a weak map that's still alive from the symbol dot four or something to some value, uh, the, no matter how collectible the symbol itself seems to be, that association has to stay there if somebody reconstructs the same symbol uh, and looks it up in the same weak map. So I, I just don't see that it's possible to do better than that. I was under the yeah, assumption that that's, that that will, that will be uh, impossible because you don't have a way to observe it. Uh, but but um, again, I'm fine. I'm fine pushing for this and just saying that there might be some other uh, areas if, if they push back on this. I mean, I think the the concern here originated from from Mark. So if Mark is convinced, then uh, maybe we're. I think we're kind of done. Yeah. And we just. Okay, so it's very good news that there was not any other objection to it other than mine, so so good. So in terms of the, I, I missed the first part, uh, my, my computer decides to upgrade today. Um, <laughs> but the, the, in terms of a tactical aspect of these, are we going to, are we okay with pushing for um, an API on the realm that only returns um, uh, for now, uh, it, 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 will, it will not have tuples and, and records, obviously, but eventually when they get a by level, we'll be able to tap on that and use them. Um, and so continue let, let to push state, yeah, uh, yeah, let me state what I think of as, as, as the gating criteria for me that seemed very plausible after our last meeting, but, but I'd still like to, to understand it in depth which is uh, what we, what some of us want to actually place between realms is membranes that are as transparent as practically possible, which, and we understand what a practically transparent membrane at a realm boundary is. Uh, we acknowledge that there's no one membrane library that is, has sufficient convergence by everyone interested in membranes uh, that, it's, we're, that we're ready to codify any one membrane library as being bundled in with the weak map proposal, I'm sorry, with the realm proposal. Uh, so, but what we, what we know we want any such boundary, whether it, it's membrane-like or not, uh, what we're seeking is a guarantee from some underlying mechanism that separation in the object graph is preserved. So the, the exercise that I, would, that I think we need to walk through for any proposed mechanism 
uh, whether based on records or tuples, whether based on symbols as we can map keys, whatever, the, 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 the asset test, the exercise to walk through is to construct at least one extremely transparent, uh, you know, extremely practically transparent membrane on top of the proposed separation mechanism and satisfy ourselves, one, that the proposed separation mechanism, in fact, enforces separation even if the membrane mechanism is buggy, even if the membrane library built on top of it is buggy, and B, that, if, that, the, that a good membrane library built on top of it is, is not paying an undue cost by getting its separation guarantee from this mechanism. In particular, that we're not going to take everything and serialize it and unserialize it to strings in order to cross the separation mechanism. Uh, so, Mark, what we, yeah. I think for the first part of that, part A, we might be able to use the TC39 integration repository that we that Leo and I crafted. I mean, it was built for integration of various components, including a very bare bones membrane implementation. I think that that would be a very good idea. So in terms of, uh, additionally, uh, I want to add that uh, JDD and myself, we worked on uh, a initial changes or, or at least some prototype with the near membrane that we use today in production. And uh, we, we went very far onto that. Um, we could do the same with the symbols, see uh, if there's anything that pops there. I, I, I don't believe there will be any issue, but I can work with JDD and, and Leo on, on just ratifying the, uh, the, the full separation using symbols as the transfer mechanism between the two realms works for us for the near membrane implementation. And maybe that, that, that also can give us a little bit of reinsurance that, that this, is, this is good. I think that would be wonderful. The near membrane is the most different compelling example. So if we can do the transparent membrane and the near membrane, the near membrane is basically satisfying a, a very different, very valuable, strong transparency property strong practical transparency properties. So the kind of opposite transparency properties, being able to show both with one underlying mechanism providing the separation guarantee would be wonderful. Now, I was asking about the tactical thing because obviously we need to continue discussing this with Google. And um, I, I can try to get Shu and, and maybe even Dominic to um, provide some feedback on eliminating the uh, structural clone from the picture and, and how far we can go without that. Uh, I, obviously they have the use cases from Google, uh, AMP and other use cases that they have. Is it going to be sufficient without the serialization? And, and obviously they will have to do maybe some JSON, stringify, parsing, whatever they want to do for their implementation to be able to tap, to, 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 to be implemented on top of this separation that does not allow structural cloning anymore. And uh, we'll have to get some feedback there uh, as well. Um, if everyone is okay, I can, I can try to get the ball rolling there, see how far we can go. If, if it turns out that it's fine for them to not have a structural cloning right now, and just having a, what we are proposing, then then it's fine. But if there is a pushback, then maybe we will have to work something out. So, it, has um, anybody written up the what the concrete API would be? I feel uh, like that would for help. for for the counter proposal. They did they did like uh, Dominic provide a, a fair um, so enough information for us to understand the API. I still disagree with part of the APIs. And we, that's an area that I want to touch on maybe today as well, what the mechanism that they're providing because you need to have mechanisms to push into the realm and get things out of the realm. And uh, those are two different ways uh, that we need to define two different APIs. But what about for what you're proposing? Is that written up anywhere that I could review? Not yet, not yet. So I need to get, again, I need to get it ready I wanted to do like a one, 
uh, up one post on the issue with the with my proposed API, which is very straightforward. Um, so if you call eval, you get a you you can only get uh, primitive values out, and if you try to return something else, it throws an error. Um, oh, the API is based on eval. Their their implementation they call it eval. I wanted to call it something else because I think it's misleading to call it eval. And maybe we can call it something else that you have synchronous execution of that. Uh, there is also the open question about the import. Like when you call import on the ROM, what does he return? Is it returns a promise uh, that resolve to what? Um, so you're loading a module, but what does it return to you? Um, and, uh, and additionally, there is the problem of calling things into the ROM without the eval function. Like they have ideas of putting a set and a call. Basically, um, think about them as a reflector call, reflector uh, set, but operating on the global object directly. Um, so they have these ideas. So to facilitate people to set it up, uh, set, set up the, the ROM initially, and potentially doing some some other calls into the uh, some reference that you have in in the ROM. And finally, um, he's proposing to define a, a, a global uh, global binding, the name of a global binding that will be installed inside the ROM in order for the ROM to communicate out to the incubator. And, and this is by providing a name and a callback. By providing a name and a callback, then you can set something like you can set window uh, sorry, global days of foo. You can set it up in such a way that when the program running inside the ROM calls foo as a function, that is an invocation of the callback that they provide when constructing the ROM. That's the API that they're proposing. Um, I think that's cumbersome and um, maybe we can simplify that or just simply provide a mechanism for someone to define this communication mechanism between the ROM and the incubator ROM. So what I would, I don't know, uh, I, I don't know the particulars of any of this. Uh, none of it sounds like mechanism that I would be eager to bundle into the ROM, pro ROM proposal, but but I'm, I'm speaking without having looked at it, so I want to note that. Um, uh, the attitude I would like to take for um, uh, is that the idea that we came to in order to be neutral among different ways to construct membrane libraries, which is a very core separation mechanism that's trying to be minimal, uh, but to guarantee that the object graphs stay separated and enables different membranes to be built on top uh, to the degree to which other conceptions of what higher level abstractions they want are things that could be built on top of a very simple primitive separation mechanism that guarantees separation. Uh, I certainly do not want to ever admit the semantics of structured clone into standard JavaScript. The structured clone is semantically a complete mess and it should never ever be part of standard JavaScript. So I'm, I'm sharing my, my screen here just to try to give you a little bit of a sense of what they will have in mind. So this example is probably uh, the prime example where you construct a ROM, you can evolve things and it might return or might not return something. You need to figure out what happened when this evolve returns something that cannot be returned to the outer incubator realm. So if, if, if the return of this is a function or, or an object or something will happen, in their case, they were uh, they, they are proposing a structured cloning. In our proposal, we'll have to figure out what that response will be. Um, that's one thing. The second thing is that they are providing these utility methods like call, get, and such. In this case, they are saying inside this realm intents invoke a add global function that should be there. And these are the arguments that you should use and the return of that operation gets uh, returned back to the outer incubator realm. Obviously the same rules apply. Uh, they were applying the structure cloning to the result. We'll have to apply like it must be is a, must be a, 
a primitive values. Um, this, um, sorry, this will need to be limited to global names, right? The, the, the right, right. In this case, this is just a lookup on the global object, which is a, a little bit weird, but um, it's a utility that you can use. You could, you could do the same with eval by calling uh, eval the, the add parentheses two and three, and it does the same thing. Um, so it would be interesting to see what is this call giving us extra thing, the extra guarantees that calls are, uh, provide. Uh, they have a set, which is similar to call. It's just going to set something as a global uh, value in case that you want to place a value into the wrong. So, it, you know, it, you don't have to argue hard to this group that this proposal is a bit of a mess. If we're spending group time here, I'm, I'm really interested in hearing what you are thinking the proposal should be. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm, before getting to that, there's only one more thing, which is pushing from inside the ROM out into the incubator. And this is the API that they're proposing, which is a, is a callback. This callback gets invoked whenever the program inside the ROM is invoking a global reference called call pattern. So it's kind of installing a function inside the realm. So when that function gets invoked, it really just calls this callback that was used during the creation of the realm. That's the proposed, there's nothing else. This is what they're proposing. Um, uh, there's, it doesn't say anything about errors and what happened when you try to eval and there is an error inside the program how we perceive this error from the incubator realm um, and so on. Uh, my, I, my proposal is to have something a little bit more simpler that uh, goes around similar to the call in this case or a set, I would say more like a set where you can create this connection between the two realms by defining uh, a, a, this callback mechanism that you can install at any given time it doesn't have to be during construction of the ROM. Uh, it's something like uh, if I have a ROM, I can decide to uh, place a function in in a in the, the global scope of the ROM in the global object by calling an API that defines what will be that name and what will be the callback when that function is invoked. So, so, let's call it a realm dot install callback function into the realm, something like that. And, and that thing allows you to define this mechanism before and after evaluation. So you can call eval that calls that function or you can do whatever you want in terms of how that function gets invoked. Uh, something like that, that is a little, a little bit more simple, I think, uh, and flexible uh, would be uh, probably um, uh, my proposal for, for this particular case. Uh, in terms of pushing data into the realm, uh, I believe uh, eval or just a simple set will be sufficient, but, but again, we'll have to, to define what kind of data I can place into the realm. If it is a primitive value, then um, probably a set is sufficient. Clarification, if I may. Um... About five minutes ago, you were suggesting that there be a, 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 I heard a suggestion, whether it was from you or from these um, other parties, that there be a default name assigned to such a callback function. Um, but now you're saying, no, that's not what you intended. You intended for the creators of the realm to specify a name for this um, callback interface. Is that's that what they're proposing is right here. Expose handler as call pattern in this case. Okay. So um, this one install a new function with this name in a global object of the realm that when invoke is a native function. When you invoke it, 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 it will just invoke this function with a set of arguments that will pass to that. I want to think through a couple of the implications here. Um, and forgive me if this is a bit of a ramble um, or off topic. Um, this is defining a single API point, um, which um, I'm wondering is, it, do we want to limit it to only one such point? Yeah, that's what I was saying, that I want something a little bit more flexible that you can install as many as you want. 
doesn't have okay. to be one. It could be as and many as you want. Second, my second concern is um, that this is allowing <clears throat> the owner of the realm, the creator of the, uh, I'm sorry, the owner of the realm to um, define globals that would allow it, that would allow code inside to maybe detect that it is in a contained realm versus JavaScript running right, right, at the top right. level that would not have that kind of detection. Right, right. Um, so, is and, that a concern or am I just worried about something that's not a real issue? Right, yeah. so I, I think uh, I, now I remember what you were saying. Uh, in, the, in a previous call, I think, or in the, in the, in the threat itself, I did mention a, an alternative to this, which is using the realm, capital R, realm, global reference, and having an static method there that allow you to communicate out to the outer, outer realm without you knowing if there is an outer realm or not. Something like realm dot call my pattern and you pass whatever arguments you want and the pattern might be listening or not um, as a single way of, of defining this communication. And then in user land, you can have uh, whatever protocol you want for, uh, for that callback to function, which is another, another solution that we can explore. Uh, I think it's elegant as well. Like you don't have as a, as a, as a, um, as a creator of the ROM, you only need to pass one callback in the configuration of the ROM. And that callback is going to be in book whenever a, the ROM, pro, the program running in the ROM calls ROM dot call my pattern with X amount of arguments. And if that's the case, then you receive a callback with the, with the arguments. Um, and if you want to detect that you are or not inside a, a ROM, uh, you will not have a way to do so, especially if the values are primitive because you call that, you don't know the result of that operation. You don't know the operation is always available there. You can disable if you want by removing that uh, static uh, method of the ROM. So th this whole way of thinking about communication is just seems bizarre to me. Uh, and I think that the, you know, the comparison with membranes, um, you know, the membrane perspective gives us a very coherent theory of communication, which is that um, the creator of a realm has a ability to talk into the realm and then it can provide into the realm an ability, you know, it, it can basically, you can call things and when you call things, you can provide, you can provide uh, objects that can be called back to and that these things become wrapped and unwrapped as they cross the membrane boundary. Now, obviously we're not building a membrane boundary in, but I think thinking of the mechanism as being there to support membranes and then membranes being the sort of the reference model for how you then communicate across the boundary uh, it just means that it's just objects talking to objects as in, in the same way that we have objects talking to objects uh, without a realm boundary. Uh, it, it's having inventing a whole new theory of communication across these boundaries that is not just the theory of objects talking to objects just seems bizarre. Yeah, I, I share Mark's sort of surprise here. I think there are probably simple or ways that we could do this that don't, I mean, to me, what, what like smells funny is that all these things involve kind of these mutation and global variables. And I wonder if we could have something that's like an API that could look like a realm dot create channel. And you pass into that two things. One is uh, like a module specifier, which could be a module block and another is a callback. And so the module that you pass in is expected to default export something like a, a function that's called inside the realm that takes a single argument, which is like the callback to uh, call out of the realm. And then it uh, that function returns a callback that gets called every time that you call into it. And you could provide the the inverse of that from the as the second argument to this API, which would take as an argument the function to, to send a message into the realm and then would return 
from that function, the callback that gets called when uh, when the realm calls into it. And so now you have a, a bi-directional kind of communication channel set up, but entirely just by those two functions being called in this kind of symmetrical way. I could write this up later. And I don't know, it would work, it would be easy to use with module blocks because that lets you have inline. I do have to point out, this sounds a lot like the post message discussion we had last week. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I missed that discussion, so I don't know. I mean, it's Im I, I don't think any of this involves structured clone. Like all this would be based on at the boundary, you check whether it's a primitive and if it's not a primitive, you throw like on the sender side and that's that. Yeah, so on that topic, I think the reason why dot set and dot call were proposed most likely is to uh, allow those parameters to uh, be sent across the barrier. I don't have a good word for that. Um, if you, we were to do it with eval, I'm not sure how we would send arguments across the barrier properly. I think uh, that's the, right, right. the idea that I described didn't have uh, eval and it didn't i'm, I'm it not didn't. i'm not arguing against your idea i'm just stating that's right 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 I, I i remember that yes if you don't have the call then you have to uh build in a string value uh so you you will not be able to pass symbols for example like you will not be able to initiate something from the incubator that provides a symbol down to the realm uh, we'll I think my idea would let you do that, but uh, it's probably too difficult to describe it in the air. So I'll... I understood it, at least, Dan. I'm just discussing existence. Uh, did, did the idea that, Bradley, for you, did the idea that I described seem like it would solve the this problem that you're describing? Uh, yes, yours should work fine uh, because you essentially are using parameters to solve things. I think the return value of it so you're passing in a communication from inner to outer as a callback. I think the return value is a way to reinvoke something might be useful. So I think that was the last thing you mentioned. It would just need oh, to be written up. Yeah, I mean, I was imagining that both sides would get this kind of symmetrical way to call into the other one. But when you do, you're just sending a message. You're not expecting return value. Correct. And then yeah. so you could use a protocol of, returning quickly from that. And there's no, that would be totally compatible with like creating one realm and then setting up several channels like in an uncoordinated way, way later with it. It does bring in some questions about if a board is ever desirable there, but. Oh, what does that mean? Different topic. You mean to close a channel? Uh, to signal how to signal that a existing message is no longer valid. I think that can be done in user land. Anyway, just, I think it's fine. Yeah, if, we, if, if you can write something down for us, uh, Daniel, that would be great. I, I didn't quite get all, all the details. Um, this one in the screen is only describing how you communicate from the ROM to the incubator. And, um, and obviously how to communicate from the incubator to the ROM. Uh, as Bradley was saying, eval is not sufficient there. We need to figure something there too. And it seems that you propose that it's kind of the same thing for both sides of the fence. Uh, I don't think that the following is incompatible with anything we just, we that anything we said, but I wanted us to keep it in mind is we keep talking about the incubator realm and the other realm, and this you know asymmetric relation between the realm that create you know the, the the parent that created the realm and the realm that was created, and that's certainly the the important place to start. Uh, but one of the things that that um, quickly comes up by arrangement starting there is um, a parent Alice creates two child realms, yeah. Bob and Carol, and then puts them in contact with each other. So you just have direct communication between realms that have been put in contact with each other uh, that are symmetric. Neither one of them is the incubator or the other. Yep, yep. That's, I think that's what, what Daniel is saying that uh, can be solved with 
using modules or something like that. Well, I guess what I was suggesting, uh, the API that I that I suggested, it would be feasible to like have one realm not just temporarily introduce the two realms to each other, but it would have to like continually forward the messages from one to the other. So it wouldn't require any kind of built-in API, but the parent realm would would form this kind of pipe. Hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, I uh, it's not what I was. It's not where I was thinking you were going. So it doesn't make sense at least yet. Uh, looking forward to your write-up. Okay. Thanks. All right, so I, I think that's it. Uh, the errors is an interesting question that they don't have an answer, they say. Um, that's something that we'll have to figure as well. I guess I, I would suggest that if you do want to forward errors from the inner realm, to the, from a child realm to a parent realm, then the child realm should have some gigantic try catch around what it's doing and explicitly like serialize the appropriate message to the to the other realm. Yeah, which is well, which is exactly how uh, you know how membranes work when you put a membrane between two two sides. Right. Right. They were they were assuming that that's what what users will do, but on the assumption that errors can be serialized um, using a structural clone. That's what that was their answer. Like oh if, yeah. If you I have guess... a structural clone, then you can you can just simply has the error as an argument and has your user land protocol that defines how you report errors to the incubator or something like that. While um, that might, might work with structure clone, when you remove a structure clone, then you, you have to do something else. I think so, the key thing is that JavaScript doesn't, JavaScript has these two control flow, you know, two control flow paths, successful return and, um, and, uh, and the throw path. Uh, and uh, the, there's nothing about the throw path that mandates that the value thrown be an error object. So I think with regard to the separation mechanism, we're trying to separate the object graphs uh, so that we're not sending objects across the boundary, but the control flow signals that go, the, the nature of the control flow that goes across the boundary should just be the nor all the normal JavaScript control flow. We shouldn't be doing anything to change the nature of the control flow. So you can still, on the throwing side, throw primitive data that then is caught on the other side and turned back into uh, object that is then rethrown. Um, I'm I'm not sure if that's even necessary because I think you can construct the right, uh, you can get the, the information across and just have the, the membrane infrastructure on the other side understand that you were trying to do a throw. I mean, with records and tuples, uh, you can explicitly represent the different things. And so the, so the core API can be more minimal where the core API is just send a message and then the message contents can contain what what, what's going on? I think I think at least for some cases it might be difficult to force uh, users to write that try catch themselves as the implication that it would automatically be hooked up because some things, particularly on the web, um, can get into cases where uh, error handling is weird, like set timeout there is no way you can properly try catch around it. You have to use the host hook for that. Um, so if they are allowed to provide anything similar to that, or you're able to recreate it inside the realm, you can get into cases where you can't introduce an async barrier 
that has a try catch around it. I don't know. Oh, but I think for that case, you would do something more like send and serialized error code to the other side indicating what happened and then the other side would would do the throw that's how i would picture it i just don't know how we tie that back to the calling context because you could have multiple calling contexts interwoven oh yeah i don't know how to do that either i mean overall this direction seems like more of an expert level api than the previous realm proposal like we have we have many expert level APIs in JavaScript. We have proxies, for example, that uh, you can't just start using a proxy because there's just a lot to learn. And realms that are restricted in this way would, would be one of those expert level APIs as well. And I think that's true whether no matter which option we go with. That seems right to me. Uh, the, the whatever separation mechanism we build I think that the primary use of it will be through some membrane library on top where, where then normal user code just sees a membrane realm boundary. Uh, all right, I'll, 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 I can share this one with the group, um, maybe via the chat or something else. And then, um, or add it to the notes. I don't know if you have, we have notes, but I'll put it. Yeah, in add, add it to the notes. And, uh, and then um, if, you, if you have any idea, you can articulate a, a, a good API that allows to do this communication, uh, that, that'll be great. Daniel, I'll, I'll bug you in the next couple of days to get some, some from you. And, and then we can go from there. It, for now, I will just focus the energies on trying to convince uh, Google that primitive values are the way to go rather than uh, the structure clone. Uh, Mark, you said that you will be doing some write-up or some some, some material about why we, we think a structured clan is not the way to go. That would be interesting to have in case that they wanted to, they, they, they push back. So we need to have that material ready. Okay, I was, I was not planning to uh, invest ahead of time in doing that, uh, but I, I certainly, um, uh, I do think structured clone is a non-starter and if there's a, a fight here, which we have to put energy into, I'm certainly happy to write that up, but I would, but- right. uh, Let me test the water, let me test the water then, and then I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. And, uh, I'd like Daniel. to raise one more point, if I may. Um, I'm wondering if there is a potential relation to explore between this um, communications channel that works uh, that we're trying to figure out and promise.delegate, um, the promise.delegate proposal um, in terms of dealing with promises, where if if I'm, what I'm trying to say is, would there be an option that we should consider about promise dot promises cr communicating across realms? That's a really interesting thought. Promise.delegate was put in there so we could have promises that communicate between VATs, or, or in JavaScript terms, between agents. Uh, but obviously, between separated object graphs communicating through promises, that's a very interesting thought. Uh, the, the, the problem, Mark, is that uh, the synchronous aspect of it, function invocation. Uh, oh, we things like that. So uh, I don't know if that's related, but uh, that that is a difference uh, between realms within one agent. We have to support synchronous crossing, uh, but uh, it shouldn't be everything that we're doing for asynchronous crossing between VATs. Uh, it might be pleasant to also support that naturally. Um, uh, I mean. Obviously, you can do asynchronous crossings, um, 
uh, given synchronous crossings, but the support that promise delegate gives for uh, asynchronous crossings is actually much more natural. Uh, and I hadn't thought about making it available for crossing round boundaries, but that's interesting. I suspect that we could find a simple primitive that would also let you make promises work across realm boundaries. I suspect that a, a simple callback would be would be enough for, for everything. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't add higher level capabilities as well. Yeah, I certainly would not want to block realms on promise delegate because I don't think they're coupled in that way. But in a world of multiple realms and this underlying enforced object graph separation uh, that might provide additional motivation for promise delegate. Probably should be captured as a separate issue in the realm spec, um, maybe reserving something in the realm spec to say, hey, um, if we want to put in some kind of promise delegate uh, hook, um, or some kind of promise handling in realms, maybe reserve a space in the realm API, not implemented, just reserved for future development. Uh, I have a hard stop at 11. And this was, um, uh, and I, I think, I don't, I'm not sure about the Zoom rules, but I think that means when I leave this Zoom, the recording might be terminated. Does anybody know? And if not, I'm just going to go ahead and terminate it so I have a clean termination. Yeah, I have to drop as well. Bye, guys. Okay.